Okay. So we'll just start airflow in a few. Azara will be leading again another change in schedule. So she he's joining in a few. Let me just um, share the meeting details with him. He's joining in a few and we'll be able to go through airflow. So just bear with us for a few more minutes. Okay, Azaria, Azaria is here now. So maybe just over to you, Azaria. I've already mentioned that we'll be going through Airflow, just showing how we can use Airflow for this week. Then we will be covering DBT tomorrow together with the data warehouse, which will be Snowflake specifically for tomorrow's for tomorrow's uh, tutorial. So over to you, over to you, Azaria. Okay. Uh Thank you, Anastasia. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm late, everyone. Um, I'm just having a couple of difficulties. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So today we're going to cover the setup of Airflow and um, see the overview of how um, automation actually works in general. Um, see the various advantages Airflow has to offer. Um, yeah, so I think let's let's get right to it. Um, let me share my screen. Um, okay. So, like before Airflow, like imagine you have uh, a cumbersome task, right? Um, let's say um, you've been tasked with. Um, you actually just want to, let's say, make a Telegram um, or a WhatsApp bot um, that takes some, let's say, cryptocurrency data um, that takes the price of Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, and a couple of um, famous cryptocurrency coins, um, and then sends that data daily um, to users um, either via text or to let's say maybe a telegram group, right? Um, and so you could manage this manually. Um, so the manual approach would be like, you'd, um, you'd log into, you'd go into coinmarketcap.com, you'd, um, you'd get the price of uh, each of the assets at that specific time, and you send it to the users, right? And so you would do this every day, um, but that is a time that you're just wasting. And this is, uh, this is a simple process, but there are various processes that we automate um, daily in the work process. Um, yeah, to save time, to save resources, because you can be doing something else um, by the time that you're doing. And so the previous approach would be to use the Chrome tab, right? So um, on Linux systems, um, I think also on other systems, uh, there is this uh, Chrome tab in which you could, uh, on which you could um, place some various expressions, Chrome expressions, and you could have uh, those specific schedules actually um, actually run those tasks, right? Um, and so I think let me log into a new window and actually um, show you the previous approach on. Uh, for example, there's actually a production system where, where we actually use, um, where we're actually using Chrome tabs and how, uh, cumbersome that process is, um, 
yeah, and the price that the but still the advantage that it has. But when we go on and later on and see airflow, um, we will see the what type of differences there are and the advantage that airflow will give us. Um, okay, so until this connects, I think um, if people have not gone through installation process, we can make this uh, follow along session. Uh, so Docker Compose installation. Um, I believe everyone has Docker installed. Is it my connection? Uh, um, 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 uh, yeah, I have a Docker, but uh, Azaria, can I ask this question for a moment? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, okay. sorry, I um, I know I should be familiar with this thing, and uh, but can you just tell us for a minute or two what exactly Docker Compose is? I, I kind of know what Docker is, but can you explain what Docker Compose is? So yeah, I don't know what I sounds related. It really helps uh, for everybody else to get along also. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's it's definitely uh, related. Um, yeah, we might also have a session just focusing on uh, Docker Compose, but what it, like you have the concept of cont containers, right? Um, so you have the concept of containers and Docker is a service that um, easily allows us to package and work and build on containers, right? Um, and so Docker Compose is just uh, another service, simply just a Docker service. It's now, um, if you have the latest installation of Docker or if you install Docker desktop, you actually Docker, get Docker Compose uh, shipped together. So what Docker Do Compose is, is just it allows you to work with multiple containers together, right? Uh, so um, I think that we will see, yeah. So Airflow's latest Docker Compose file. Um, when we go through the setup process, what we see is um, you're not just going to be work when you're in production systems, and even when using just Airflow itself, um, you're not just going to be interacting with a single container, but you're going to be interacting with multiple containers. And Docker Compose creates this network and sort of this bridge around all of your containers and allows them to just communicate with each other. Uh, is that, is that, is that oh, I think that's really, uh, yeah, I think I get it. It's actually, uh, like the name suggests, it's composes and yeah, gives exactly. us a way to yeah, interact exactly. with several containers. Yes, um, exactly. Okay. Mohammed, thanks. Mohammed? The idea is clear. Uh, so, I uh, I tried to install a flow from the pip uh, command. Does that do the job, or do I have to install um, a Docker Compose? Um, um, it does. It has been a while since I've just only used pip uh, to work with Airflow. Like after you've used pip. Um, did like Airflow launch um, and what type of database is it actually using um, to store the specific metadata and other various configurations? Um, you can start off with pip, um, but I believe it makes things definitely complicated. There are going to be various components that you're going to have to bring into your workflow to have this full Airflow setup. Um, it, it is definitely enough to get started, but um, I think definitely having Docker and Docker Compose and have, going to that Docker setup um, is going to be essential at some point. Um, and so, yeah, we're still going to take things slow. So um, if you have, if you don't have Docker Compose installed, uh, go to go to the Docker Compose installation because we'll definitely just take our time. Um, yeah. Thank so, okay, yeah, so like, this is actually a production system that we have. So yeah, what this does is it is just simply running this Python script run.py and it is taking this specific configuration, right? And so this is sort of the old school way in which uh, you'd have, uh, you'd schedule tasks, right? It still does the job, um, but yeah, so you'd have, 
Um, what this is, is just the specific schedule interval. So if you go to crontab.glue, yeah, so it is just uh, Chrome schedule expression. So at this specific time, uh, at this specific interval, the computer itself is going to go into this specific directory and then it is just going to run this script right and at this specific interval it is going to do that it, at the next interval it is going to do that and so you can go into chrome tab Google to look at the various expressions that you have for example this is just going to run at 405 like it, it, the expression steps are minute hour um day uh and months um and if you i think uh if you wanted it to daily or okay so i guess that's not it um uh, yes mohammed uh i'm not familiar with a uh, current app could you explain more about current app what is used for okay so if yeah like like i said early on it's just if you have um, a specific job that you want to, to do repeated, re repetitively, um, you're going to, you're going, you can use the Chrome tab to schedule specific jobs, right? So if you go to the Chrome tab to help, um, yeah, there are specific, you can just edit it to write the specific uh, tasks that you want to run. And these are the specific tasks that I have running um, on this specific instance. So at a, at a specific time, it is going to just simply run the script. So it is it is like, I think, just like Yalawal said um, yesterday, um, it is sort of like an alarm which is getting triggered at a specific time. So it is just a trigger, um, an, autom an, an automation trigger. Um, yeah, so you can play around with this um, specific values um, and you could get, um, yeah, you could get really complicated um, cron expressions on which maybe you could um, write, run your specific expressions on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, on a weekly basis, um, even on a minute basis, right? So you could, this is just a cron expression, which is um, sort of like setting your time uh, for your alarm, right? Um, and so you'd set that and you'd have a uh, specific script that is run. But this is definitely getting cumbersome. Um, going through the logs and unless you have specific outputs that are being written to specific files, um, you wouldn't know if your, if your script was actually run, if it doesn't have um, a very determined or specific output at this moment, uh, you wouldn't be able to uh, you didn't be you didn't really be able to see what 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 actually happened right and this this is just like with nine cron expressions right so let's say you your your entire system now has to actually schedule not just nine nine of these tasks but it has to actually schedule maybe let's say hundreds and maybe even thousands of tasks that that are actually that actually have to be automated right and so you can see this is this is not scalable. You can't use nano. Just going to a text editor and editing this um, is really not something that is scalable. Not something that is that is actually yeah that is scalable. And so um, Airflow really allows you to scale into uh, really big infrastructures, um, and is used like by very large um, industries like um, even Airbnb. Um, and even it's not just used on large industries as well, um, even on small companies, um, even here on 10 Academy, um, I think I believe the 10X team actually use Airflow to schedule some of the tasks that they do. Um, yeah, and so it is just this um, automation script that Airflow provides, right? Uh, so, yeah, uh, I think I've sent the link to install Docker Compose if you haven't uh seen it but if we go to the latest docker compose file um yeah and we want to get started um let's go into documents 
Okay, so that's it. Right. Okay, so let's uh, make a new directory and um, start off from a clean from a clean start. So we can follow along the docs and um, have a clear installation, right? Uh, well, so. Uh, what it what this does what this uh, okay let me share the link as well so that you can follow along uh no uh cron tab is not uh airflow analogy um cron expressions are just um expressions um for a specific time or like simply just exp expressions that are specif specifying an interval on which that time is run and the cron tab is just deep the default built in um, into a Unix system, which allows you um, to schedule tasks. Uh, so I'm not sure how it is on Windows and Mac OS, but it, it is it is just a, a built in system you can use to schedule. Um, okay. So uh, I think I sent the link, right? Yeah. So you can open that file uh, to get the documentation that we have. And so what this is doing is just curl, uh, is using the curl command to get that uh, docker compose to a YAML file, which will allow us to work with those multiple containers that Airflow, um, Airflow needs. And it just downloaded this docker compose to a YAML file, right? So if we go here, we will get this docker compose to YAML, which has, um, a very large configuration unless you are um, really in charge of setting up Airflow uh, and really handling that either DevOps or MLOps automation, um, you'll probably not be diving deep into this, um, but it, it is definitely something to look into and we'll see uh, some of the major components that you'll be using. Um, yeah, until then, I think let leave, I have pushed it. Uh, uh, yeah, so let us just start up this entire container. I think the single app command can can do everything. Um, okay, yeah, so, okay, mm, initializing the environment, airflow UID, airflow any okay. Uh, most of the steps are not necessary, but I think let's let's go into some of the uh, common things that should common concepts at least that have to be clear, right? So this is just using the Airflow image, um, so the built-in Airflow version that is built into the Docker Compose YAML file. So we're now going to be using um, Airflow 2.4.0, um, and so. Um, I think another core concept is the Airflow Executor. So what the Airflow Executor is, is it is just the... Uh, no, yes, so yes. I want to know how you, you got the YAML file at the beginning. Um, okay, so we got the YAML file from this command. So what curl does is it just um, goes through to this URL and gets this specific YAML file, right? So if you go to this URL, I think you can just copy paste this if curl doesn't work. If you go to this URL, you'll have this YAML file and it, it is just downloading this file to the to my computer. So it's clear. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what the Airflow Executor is, it's like um, Airflow supports multiple types of executors. Um, I didn't actually know Celery Executor is the default built-in. This was not the case, but like there are various types of executors. That there are executors that, for example, in this in the previous command, like um, one task will be run, and then the next task will be run, and then the next task will be run, right? Um, and so that would be like it is running the tasks sequentially. Um, and so there is a sequential executor which would do that so that maybe our instance does not get clogged up by um, maybe hundreds of tasks that we actually want to schedule, right? And so this various types of executors 
depending on your need, um, you're going to have to choose um, what type of executor that you have. Um, and so the salary executor is actually um, one type of executor where you can have uh, multiple workers. So you can think of this um, sort of as a parallel execution um, onto which like multiple tasks can be run at the same time. Um, and so the salary executor is sort of uh, a booted up worker that is um, going to be handling some of our tasks, right? Um, and this SQL Alchemy connection is just a connection to the Postgres database uh, that we that Airflow actually needs because of the various logs and various metadata that Airflow has to store. And so I believe the Postgres, uh, we also, when we do that, yeah, we're also creating this Postgres container, right? We also have this uh, Postgres um, service within. So we have a Postgres container that this Airflow is relying on. And so that is why we're using Docker Compose because we're working with uh, multiple services, even just uh, Airflow itself can't really properly function, right? It needs a database, it needs uh, multiple other services. Um, yeah, and so what um, Redis is, is just a backend for the type of executor that you're going to be using. Um, yeah, I think just the executor and the database that you're using are the core parts here. Um, yeah, and it, yeah, it depends on Redis and it depends on Postgres, this specific Airflow container. Um, and it has this volumes part. And so what this volumes part is, um, I think when we talked about Docker, we've said um, Docker is like having your own little world, right? Um, your, your own little container um, encapsulated away from uh, the instance that you're working on. Um, but let's say you actually want to share some either files or folders, right? Um, and you want to connect um, that little word with your word uh, or with your instance. And so what you're doing is simply you're just mapping uh, specific folders. Like in this case, it's, it wants to map the DAGs folder, the logs folder, and the plugins folder um, into the container words, uh, into Airflow, into the world of Airflow and create those three directories. And so um, if we just go back to, I think this was it, right? Yeah. So yeah, uh, some directories in the container are mounted. Um, yeah, it is just using it to synchronize content between the computer and the container. Um, and so let's make this three directories um, inside here so that they actually get mapped, right? So what we've done is just create this dogs, logs, and plugins directory. And those will be mounted in um, into the container itself. Uh, and um, if you're uh, if you're facing some issues with Airflow UID, um, you might also have to run this command, uh, which I don't think will be necessary in our case. Um, yeah, and so what this Airflow init command does is, uh, if we go here, we have this specific Airflow init service, right? Container where yeah. So we have this Airflow init, which is just running the initialization scripts for Airflow, right? It is creating the specific user and running various bash commands, uh, depending on the type of user, uh, depending on the available CPUs that we have, depending on the memory, and setting ju just this specific constraints that um, Airflow will use to run. Uh, but I think that if we just do Docker Compose, YAML app, I believe it will it will also run the Airflow init uh, itself. Uh, might already have those running. Okay. So the Airflow UID, um, it's just a warning. Um, but using the root user in this case um, is okay. Yeah. So it's yeah, it started off with the Airflow init itself. So that step wasn't necessary, but yeah, this boots up our 
Docker Compose file. So I had already pulled in those images previously. That's why it's not taking a long time. But run this command now because uh, if the containers. Yes, I'm doing it. Uh, the in the Docker Compose YAML file, the it's it uses Post Postgres Redis and other services as a dependency. So, uh, the, is it is it like uh, obligatory? I mean, is it must to have Redis or or all the dependencies? Maybe mm -hmm. like if we have uh, memory constraints constraints, uh, can we just comment out uh, some services? I yes. mean, which one is like uh, okay. uh, a must? Like, the, the, the do we have to use Redis, for example? Um, in in our case, in this case, you'd have to use Redis because I didn't know that it's shipped in with the Celery Executor. So the Celery Executor requires Redis, um, which is why you have to use Redis in this case. But I believe if you go into the local executor, um, you wouldn't have to use Redis. So you can drop that. Uh, but for a metadata database, um, you would need a database so you can use maybe either a remote database if you have access to it, or um, you could keep the Postgres database right there. Um, so it would depend on the type of executor. So there are other executors, maybe even the Kubernetes executor. So if you change those, you'd then have to, you'd maybe even have um, additional services other than that. Yeah, okay. okay, I think, okay. Um, yeah, so, and yeah, definitely Airflow is really compute intensive. Um, I think that's why um, AWS Access is also being uh, provided. I did not set it up. And so you can see how much time it is taking uh, on my instance as well, just to run. And so, yeah, Airflow is definitely really um, compute intensive. Uh, but it is definitely the most widely used in the industry. Um, you are required to use um, Airflow, but maybe even after this training, if uh, when you get a job and you're looking for um, you're looking for other automation tools to use, I think um, another uh, another orchestrator that is being really that is getting gaining popularity is this um, Dugster. So uh, if you have, when you have time, definitely um, this is something to look into, especially those that are interested in MLOps, DevOps, um, and also data engineering. Um, okay, so should, look, should take, not take time. So if we go to localhost 8080, yeah. So we're asked to sign into Airflow, right? Um, and so the default user that it creates um, with the default username and password um, are Airflow Airflow. Uh, and so you sh this should sign in. Um, Let's give it a little bit more time. I think I actually have access to another compute. So we can we can go over to that since I think my my computer might not be able to handle this load. Um, okay, 
so. So what I'm just doing is just connecting to an instance um, elsewhere um, on AWS. Because yeah, like like I'm gonna see that's really resource intensive and so connected to it. Okay, so um Exist. Okay. Uh, yeah, this actually uh, opened the one running on my computer. Yeah. So what you can see, this is just the UI that Airflow provides. Um, yeah. And these are specific schedules or specific DUGs. Um, so DUGs are directed as cyclic graphs, um, which just means they encapsulate uh, a couple of, they can encapsulate a couple of tasks within them. So if we maybe see this, um yeah these are default examples that ship within airflow um if you don't want to get them uh you can simply do uh, uh you can simply just comment out this line when before you start off your docker compose and it would not load those specific examples um yeah so, so uh, Airflow tutorial already exists. Okay. Uh, so let's let's just go through the steps that we did. Not not a lot of steps um, that we had to go through. Okay, so let's create the Docker Compose emo file uh, that we used previously, and let's just copy this one, uh, paste it here. So we just brought the Docker Compose the YAML file here, and what we did was we created the docs folder, uh, created the docs folder. We created um, we created the logs folder, and. Uh, we created the plugins folder so these three folders have their their own roles so this docs folder is where we will store um just like this the built-in examples is where we will store our docs uh the logs folder airflow we will use this to store various logs that it has um and the plugins folder um i believe it would um allow you to globally install um uh, or to make uh, to make it to make various packages or various plugins globally available. So if you had an external package that you maybe wanted to use, um, you could uh, bring that in here. Uh, yeah. So this is the Docker Compose the YAML file. I hope we have Docker Compose here. Uh, and let's just run it from that. So it's pulling uh, the various services that are required. Um, yeah, and I think going back and up until this installation process runs. Um, so what a dog? What a dog is? Uh, so dog summary total types. Okay, so let's go to the to the graph view. Um, Okay, this is very slow. Uh, yeah, so simply what a what an airflow dog is, it, it is just um, an encapsulation of specific tasks that you want to run, right? So you have a specific task um, that is running, and the dog is just an encapsulation of that. So it can be a specific, uh, just a single task, or it can be uh, multiple tasks, like maybe a model training process where um, you would train multiple models. Um, and you'd then choose the best model from that 
and then maybe then just deploy your model, right? So it would allow you to have this entire automation of a model building process, or maybe even an entire automation of um, an ELT or ETL pipeline process where um, a specific task is supposed to extract data from a specific endpoint. So in our case, maybe from this. So one task would be, uh, would go here um, and fetch data from CoinMarketCap. Um, and then the next task would um, maybe just send an email uh, to you alerting you of the various price chains, um, or maybe even getting those this price data, um, bring some transformation in it. So for example, uh, like uh, if you want to store it into your database, you might be one, you might, a simple transformation might be to remove this uh, percent sign. And if it's in a string format, convert it to a float format, do some transformation, and then load it into a database. And so this entire ATL pipeline can also uh, be encapsulated in a single DAG with multiple tasks, uh, specified as multiple tasks, uh, as we'll see. Uh, okay, find the address is already used. Uh, okay, so what do I have running, I think? Um, yes, Sanjay. Uh, after we, uh, I mean, launch, I mean, we Docker, we do like we, do, we run the command, the command Docker Compose app. It just runs, and where do we find the, uh, uh, I mean, the user interface the, uh, that you're using right now? Okay, so it is running. I am on. I, it's running on port eighty eighty, I guess. But I'm running on uh, WSL two. So, uh, how do we do a port forwarding? Because like the port in the Windows system and the Windows system for Nulix are uh, different. So the ports are not f uh, forwarded. Like, and yeah. it's not uh, showing up. How how yeah. do how to yeah. like, make it work? Okay, so if you go into, I'm not completely sure how uh, WSL2 works, um, but if you go to the Airflow web server, um, which is handling the user interface section of Airflow, uh, it is forwarding just the port 8080 from the container and mapping it to your uh, local ports um, 8080. So I'm not sure if... In that, um, in that case, it should have worked like when I do HTTP localhost 8080. Um, but yes. like, the, the, it's running on my like container. The container is running well, but uh, it's the on the browser. Like I'm not getting the uh, site. I mean, um, okay. So maybe try try out using a different port if the port eighty eighty is blocked, or um, trying it out with the one two seven point zero point zero point one. Um, other than localhost, if localhost is maybe mapping to another place. Okay, um, sh should I just try uh, forwarding the port to another uh, port uh -huh. number? Yeah, uh, try it with 127.0.0.1, .0 .0 uh, maybe before, local, before changing it. But if that doesn't work, I think you can map it to another port. If it is I have another question though. Uh, th there is a one like intermediate step that we just skipped. Uh, it says like to set up uh, uh, the right airflow user. Like we need to like create a, a user ID. Unless we do that, like uh, it's just run on the root level. So I think mm -hmm. it's it's okay, right, to run it on the root uh, uh, um, privilege. I mean. Uh, it, like we uh, unless we just specify a, a airflow user id like it, it will use the root yes system. it is okay for now because it's it's not anything in production and we're just using it to see the airflow yeah, overview but it's definitely something that you have to do yeah um, we do definitely yeah. have to do it. 
So it's not it's not uh, the case like uh, uh, the the reason it's not working for me is not uh, the case that I'm not setting up a user ID for it, right? That might also. Be I was just case. wondering. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Try try this out as well. Uh, yeah. Definitely try this okay, out. Okay. I'll well. try. That, that might also be the case. Yeah. Um. Yes. Nothing. Uh, I faced the same issue as a uh, and not and. Uh, as I've understand it, uh, I like like the right way to fix it is like when you install Docker, somehow somehow my permission problem was for the Docker compose command, not the not the YAML file, but the actual Docker compose file was required a privilege. And if like if Pandanet could check that, if that's the case, like he he can change the Docker compose the commands privilege, not the YAML one, but the commands, the actual command. So, like changing uh, the Docker privilege, right? Uh, yeah, while, while you install it, there are steps you should follow to change the privilege, like the Docker, the Docker command, the CLI privilege. Uh, if you, if you, if he did that, uh, uh, the problem is with the user, the airflow user. But if not, he should change the actual CLI privilege. How do I do that? Let me send. Let me. I mean, is it on the, the yeah compo the YAML compose the in, in the Docker compose YAML file or like is it uh, some uh, step in the documentation? Yeah, I think there's a step in the documentation in Docker installing comp uh, documentation. There is there are two steps you have to follow. Uh, while that allows you to change the privilege to give it not to give them like the normal user privilege. By default, the when you install it using sudo, it it uh, requires a sudo privilege while you run it too. So you have to change that privilege. Okay, in order for it to run well, like I have to use sudo commands when when I do uh, Docker compose up. Are you saying that? Yeah, you should. Change like that. I ran it without a, a sudo command and it just ran, run. But uh, like, okay, I'll just uh, try that. Hmm. Um, okay. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, definitely look into that and also yeah uh i think look into the various issues that might have a reason uh yeah thank you Matt. uh yeah so this is a new installation that i've set up on another instance um so on the aws instance so you just simply follow the same exact the same exact procedures um yeah and because we commented um the example sections out um from the docker compose file um, we start off with a fresh installation, right? Um, yeah, and so, yeah, like like we've said, um, simply a dog script is just a Python file, uh, which just does some specific task, right? Um, and which we will write inside of the dogs directory, uh, because that is the one that is mounted and that is where Airflow will go on to look for those files, for those files, right? Uh, so uh, let's create an initial dog dog by file. Uh, yeah, so I've not tried this out yet. It might not work. Uh, but yeah, we'll go through the debugging process as well together to uh, see the various things that are working. Um, yeah, and I have the documentation opened up on another screen. So if we're wondering where I'm getting this command, it is exactly from the Airflow documentation, right? So there is a quick start section um, where you'd have, uh, okay, this is just showing the installation process, but uh, Airflow uh, Python operator. Um, yeah, so what operators are in Airflow are, um, they're just um, encapsulations of specific tasks, right? So this Python operator allows us to execute um various python commands or python functions and there is the bash operator which would allow us to execute various bash commands there is the telegram operator which would allow us to interact with telegram uh, again for 
lots of and lots of tasks that you can think of and for lots of for lots and lots of use cases um python already has uh built-in operators for it so you, it really makes things uh, a lot easier so the thing that we always import is to um from airflow uh we import jug um and also from airflow dot uh decorators uh we import task so within our dag we have specific tasks that are going to be running right um and so how we and how we declare our dag um we can declare it using uh the what's it called uh the the python context uh or the wiz keyword right which would allow us to just manage the resources um, within that um, specific execution context. Uh, yeah, and I also have uh, to make it easier to write the, the Airflow dugs. There is this pretty good Airflow snippets extension that VS Code provides by um, Lucas Mellin. Um, you can look into that. Uh, yeah, which auto completes uh, some of your code. So, yeah. What is this tutorial, right? So this every Doug um, needs a specific ID, um, a specific Doug ID uh, to be individually identified by it. So I think we can uh, make this more descriptive, give it a specific Doug ID. And there are uh, default arguments that you can specify. I think we can also skip this. Um, yeah, and a schedule interval that we've talked about um is the is the is sort of like that regular amount uh maybe a daily amount maybe a single time uh doing maybe just once for a specific time just like that alarm uh when we're specifically scheduling it is going to be specified in this schedule interval right uh and for this schedule interval we can use that specific cron expression that we've talked about uh which we got from crontab dog right um yeah and so if we just wanted it to run at four or five uh we could have uh we could have this cron expression specified here and it would airflow would go on to run it at this to run the specific task at this specific schedule interval and the start date um would be the date on which this task starts starts running right so today is september 20 um i believe we can set even a future date for example if we only want the task to start running starting from october uh we can specify a future date um on which this will run right uh so from date time wait date time uh and we can use the date time, but we can also specify like a previous date. Um, yeah, for example, like let's, uh, okay, so it takes, in, uh, it takes in a year, a month, and a date. Let's say starting from uh, the first month of this year, right? So the first of the first 2020. Um, yeah, and so this task would, we, we, have, we have set a start date of in the past, um, and so this task um, is going to be scheduled for the entire period of 2022, um, for the entire period of 2022 period, right? And so if we, like, because we have not specified uh, the specific things that are, that are supposed to happen after this, this is throwing an error. But if we actually, through this into production, what Airflow would assume is, okay, I have a start date that is going to be starting on, um, january 1st of 2022 right um and this task is okay let's change this to at daily um yeah and like those you saw those specific chrome expressions and for common expressions airflow has this um shorthand expressions within it that allow you to just uh specify this task like for an hourly task you can use hourly um, for a daily task, you can use daily, right? So you have set a start date and you have set a schedule interval. And the start date was um, on January 1st, right? Uh, so what Airflow would think in this case is, okay, 
um, I'm going to start on January 1st, but today is September 20, right? So it's going to count all of those days, maybe around 250, 260 days. Um, and so it is going to schedule those 260 runs, right? So it is going to, it is going to give to the executor that we've talked about previously. Um, it is going to like, for example, if this is go just going to, let's say, uh, print hello world, right? If the specific thing that we're doing is just uh, hello world print statement, um, it is going to give to the worker around 260, 260 print statements, and it's going to tell it, um, do it, do all of those things, right? Which is very inconvenient. Um, so we can set this to a future date, um, or we can set this to today, but if we set this to today, we are we are also uh, we we are also missing out on we might also miss out on um, a specific interval because the start date would then go on to be the next date, right? So we can just simply set a specific date in the past, and we can set the we catch up parameter to false, um, yeah, and this this would be good. Uh, yeah, so it would not catch up. It would just start on from uh, the next time specifying um, any previous time period that you'd, you'd like, right? Um, okay, so this is the dog instantiation and the requirements for um, writing your initial dog, right? So within your dog though, um, you'd have um, specific tasks, right? So specific tasks that are going to be run within your DAG. And so um, Airflow, this task, it, it provides uh, an easy operator to use um, and you pass it a specific task ID. Um, and so the tasks themselves also uh, have specific task, specific identifications, uh, which are their task IDs. Um, so for your task i don't think it supports space um and so we can define a specific function uh just prints prints hello world, right? so this prints hello world uh print hello world um and i'm not completely sure if yeah, I, I believe the print statement also gets printed, but it might just be what we put in the return statement that gets printed. So let's uh, see this together. Uh, so we have uh, we have a specific task now within our dog, right? And so we can have uh, multiple tasks um, within your individual dog that you're uh, that you're specifying. Um, Okay, so I believe that that's it. Um, let's, um, yeah, so, but in order for the task, I, yeah, I think let's go on to the UI and see if we now have access to the Doug. Right, yeah, so now we have this a simple tutorial doc so when we hover over it uh we have the specific description of it so this is now not yet triggered this doc has not started but yeah we have a scheduled interval of daily so from since we have set our date to a previous time period when we start this doc it is supposed to run but it is not going to run those 200 and something um scheduled periods because of this catch up parameter. It does not need to catch up. It just needs to start. Um, if we had set, um, I believe if we had set the start date for today um, and we we actually have a scheduled interval of daily, it would go on to start on the next UTC period and we would not have uh, the run for today. Um, but definitely um, go on and look for that. And this tags is just the tag that would allow us to simply easily filter it out. So if we had uh, multiple dogs, uh, 
we would have an easy time to filter them out, right? Yeah. And so within our job, we have specified a task and we should be able uh, to see our task, right? So Doug tutorial, this total tasks of zero. Okay, no tasks found. Okay, so I think that might be because of the case that we're not actually running this specific task. I do not think we have to specify it. Um, okay, is that a question? Uh, but it is also, okay, so I'm not completely sure what is this from this Prince Hello World, right? Yeah. So this is supposed to this is supposed to run the specific task we have at hand. Um, yes, Neil Oh, I was about to say that you have to specify if it is a downstream or upstream under the task in a bracket so that you can see the graph. I mean, uh, as a list. Okay, so we have to specify this as a list in the task. Yeah, yeah, and specify if it is a downstream or upstream. Um, okay, but like I think this was the only task that we had. Uh, so if we had like consecutive tasks, we could we would use the the shift operators to specify other tasks, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, but I was hoping to just run. Uh, this single task, which I think should have been the case. Um, okay, hold on. I think we have the Python operator here, right? Okay, so this Doug. Okay, so we have the specific task that is provided, right? Yes, sir. Sorry, uh, maybe it is because the um, the interval thing that Doug, uh, uh, the, I'm sorry, that Airflow uses in the CF file. So there's a time, there's an interval between you uh, editing the code and Doug reading it. I'm sorry, uh, Airflow reading it, maybe that's the reason. Um, okay, yeah, that, that, that might be the reason. Um, yeah. And yes. also, I had I had another question. Okay, go on. So, uh, are we every time are we are we supposed to run this uh, DAG every time? Let's assume we didn't schedule it. So, if there if if there is a schedule, it will run according to the schedule, right? But for example, can we run this using our uh, Python code or something else? Do we explicitly have to go to the Airflow web server in order to run DAGs every time? Um, no, like, so that specific schedule is what's, um, is what's automating it. So like what you're saying is to actually open this, um, specific trigger, right? Just this trigger, the pause and unpause. I'm not sure if, um, so I think, I believe the default starts with a paused dog. So what, if it doesn't have any task, what did it run? Um, yeah, but like the specific schedule that you define in your code is, you, there is no need to go into the Airflow UI. Um, anything that you do starts off here. Um, I'm not sure if there's a way to start off with um, an unpaused Doug, um, but you can look into that. Um, but like yeah, once... Okay. Uh, okay, so, uh, okay, now, nah, okay, okay. I was asking about, I was asking this because I was uh, having problems, several ones, uh, in order to run this uh, thing. So every time, if there is a way, if I can just uh, run it, run my docs and see the error from the, the Visual Studio code or from the Python file, that would have been easier for me. That's just one thing I realized, but it's it's not actually a problem. It's just actually a kind of, uh, 
it's yeah. kind of helpful, kind of circumnavigating my problem. So it's not, yeah. Um, thank you very much. Okay, yeah, and even you can use VS Code, definitely. Um, what this container uh, installation does is um, it allows you to really run things easily. And so you have those specific containers that are running and you can use the you can use the, the specific Docker commands, like uh, for example, uh, you have like the specific Docker containers that you're running, right? Uh, so for example, if you wanna if you wanna go into a specific, like let's say if you wanna debug maybe this container, like you could just simply attach into that container using the using the terminal commands, right? And you could have a bash shell where you could actually, uh, yeah. And then you, you, you were now inside of the Airflow container and you can go to the various logs, to the various docs um, within VS Code itself. Okay, 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 nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, no problem. Okay, so total run displayed. No tasks found, what is happening? First run, what did it run? All run types, all run states. Um, run this equals to context. The run this. Okay, so Airflow has definitely changed since the last time I've used it. Uh, is this a keyword maybe Airflow does? does not ship with do like the task decorator and here can you get back to the code yeah uh does the the two two parentheses two two uh function we can have them both here. Actually, um, okay, so I think let's just maybe copy the entire thing and let's see what we'd have, right? Simply just the docs. So that's how you define decorators. Um, Uh, the, the 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 print hello world uh function i think you you will miss the parenthesis the the quotation marks uh, ah okay <laughs> uh, yeah so we have to make we have to define the task as a function call maybe yeah that might that might be the key so uh, nice catch um Okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, nice catch, Mohammed. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, so and we now have the tutorial task. So within the context, um, we'd have to specify that um this decorated function um is actually a function call. Um uh, yeah, and there are definitely um lots of more ways to specify your dub, um, to also specify your task. I think like Neo Mukiza um stated early on you could um specify your function your um tasks simply just as functions um and not uh, as decorated functions and um you could use the bit shift operator to state um what the task is doing um yeah but then you'd have your specific task here uh so this dog has not run since the specific period because we were wrong and we have specified uh uh, schedule interval for D. So the next uh, run would be for the next UTC and for the next UTC change to happen to actually see the change. So instead of that, to see the logs now, we can trigger the DAG, right? So 
you trigger the duck, uh, the duck should start normally. So yeah, that is what this um, executor configuration and various configurations that you uh, use actually come into place. Um, because sometimes you're going to have to, yeah, you're going, to, you're going to have many dogs and your computer is really going to burn out. Um, and you'd have to find um, a solid method to actually um, run it. So if we go into the logs, um, we would either have uh, two hello world statements um, or just a single one if it's just going to be printing out the return. Yeah. So it prints out just the return. So that run is just within the, the initial print statement, really doesn't matter. Uh, but we have the log for um, the return statement or for this Python function. Uh, yeah. And so um, that is how you specify um, over the Python operator. Um, so for example, like in our case, maybe um, we can change this into, um, do I have my charger on? Uh, one moment. Um, um, yes, go on. Uh, so what, what if we want to, to, to link this task or this DAG with another DAG? Um, so that the another DAG or the second DAG or task will run after uh, the specific task run. Um, yeah, so I believe like when you linking DAGs um, will be a bit more complicated, but what you do is um, you link specific tasks, right? right? So uh, like you can have multiple tasks and um, specific tasks can be uh, can be passing the information to the next task and that information might be passed on to the next task. And so you do that by uh, using XCOMS uh, in Airflow. Um, yeah, so for, for cross communication. So it, it's a mechanism that lets tasks talk to each other, uh, right? So for uh, when your initial Yes, uh, yeah, the hello world is pointed there. Um, yeah, so the XCOMs, uh, yeah, just there are mechanisms that, less, that let the tasks um, talk to each other. Uh, yeah, and how you would do that? Um, let's see for an example. Yeah, so like task instance pulls the return value uh xcom from pushing task right okay so we have this specific task id right tutorial task um and so this this specific value for example if if it's within the context of the dog uh where is the task instance uh i'm not sure if it's talking about the task instance as uh the XCOM, mm -hmm. I believe it's the Prince Hello World. Because of the decorator, there might be another function that is doing it, but I believe this value would get this Hello World and you could then pass on uh, this value into your next task. And so you'd have this uh, task to task, um, task to task communication, right? Uh, yeah, and I think, okay, like time has passed and my computer might shut down. I don't know what's happening, uh, but yeah, I think there are definitely um, lots of resources that talk about this. Um, since I've not tried it out, it might take a while, um, but like, yeah, the astronomer blogs of Airflow are definitely really good. Um, this astronomer, what astronomer does, um, is there just a data pipeline solution? Um, you can see most of the things that they're doing, but their airflow documentation is um, really good. So go on and read the, their specific blogs. 
and I believe um, on YouTube there is uh, there is this um, I don't know what was uh, I believe Mark uh, data was Mark I believe she's someone who also works at Astronomy uh, with like really good resources um, about airflow um, definitely much better than um, what I can say so. Uh, airflow, uh, mark, I guess. Yeah, so this this data was mark. I'm new to airflow, airflow is hard. I don't okay, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna link for his channel here, and definitely, I hope everyone has followed along and uh, set up airflow. But, like, uh, what was it? Yeah. Go to the go to one or two videos that it has. Um, yeah, even there's the there's a setup process, I guess. Um, yeah, and this too for those that like the videos and for those that like the blogs, um, you can do this. But yeah, task with task communication with XCOMs, and there are definitely lots of things you can see with Airflow. And yeah, I think going on and experimenting with it after this is the best way to learn. Does anyone have any more questions? Okay. Yeah, so I, I guess that's that's it from my end. If uh, yeah, those resources will definitely get you everything that you need um, definitely if your um, AWS is provided so that you don't have to face those concrete issues. Um, but if you're, um, but definitely if you want to experiment locally, uh, look at the various executors that are in place. Um, the local executor, I believe, executes um, one task at a time and really does not take um, a lot of memory and allows you to also remove various services from uh your compost configuration uh yeah i think we can we can end this year uh, no one has any questions yeah goodbye everyone